Hi honeys, it's Emmy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Emmy. I'm a certified nutritionist and the creator of the Eat As Much As You Want plant-based lifestyle program where I coach you one-on-one -on, -one on how to lose weight on a plant-based diet. Yes, I am in the new Healthy Honeys headquarters and I don't have a Healthy Honey sign and I need to remember to buy one and I don't have my phone, so it's across the room. Hey Siri, remind me to buy a Healthy Honey sign in five minutes. Check. Woo! In today's video, we're going to be debunking keto. Now, if you are on a keto diet and you are happy as a clam, I'm not here to attack anybody to attack you. I mean, come on. This is what we're working with here. However, I have had a lot of people ask me about the keto diet. I do not recommend it, and in this video, I'm going to explain why that is. So I'm going to start out by talking about why the keto diet seems to work, because that's what a lot of people are saying. They're like, Emmy, I don't get it. We hear that keto is bad for us and it doesn't work, but how come there are all these people that are shredded on a keto diet? So there are a few reasons why the keto diet seems to work. And when I say work, I refer to the fact that it helps people lose weight. The first reason why the keto diet helps people lose weight is because they are losing water weight. So when we process carbs, we process them as glycogen. That is how we store carbs in our body, as glycogen. We can store about 400 grams of glycogen in our liver and then 100 grams of glycogen in our muscles. So living in our liver and our muscles is about 500 grams of glycogen. Now, we do tap into these stores if we are not eating carbohydrates or if all the carbohydrates that we've eaten have been burned off. So if you're a runner, you're probably familiar with the term hitting the wall, and that's the point where you're like, ugh. That's when you've depleted all of your glycogen stores because you've tapped into all of those because you've burned off all the fuel. You're on mile 20 of the marathon, and now you're going into those stores. So if through extreme exercise, we can tap into those glycogen stores, and also if we are not eating carbohydrates, we'll tap into those glycogen stores as well. So the keto diet is only about 5% carbohydrates. It is a very, very high fat diet and it's very low in carbs. So people on a keto diet are not eating many carbs. This means that they're going to have to tap into those glycogen stores. Why am I talking about this so much? Well, for each gram of glycogen that we store, our body stores three to four grams of water. So if we're storing about 500 grams of glycogen, that means that we need about 2,000 grams of water just to process that glycogen. So when we go on a keto diet and we stop eating those carbs and we tap into those glycogen stores, we also not only do we get rid of the 500 grams of glycogen because we have to burn those off, but also we drop the 2,000 grams of water that was being used to store that glycogen. So that's about four and a half pop pop try that again. So that's about four and a half pounds right off the bat, gone. Just from not eating carbohydrates, four and a half pounds of water just vanishes right away. So people step on the scale and they're like, hallelujah, the keto diet is king. I am losing weight like crazy. But it's not fat that's being lost, it's water. So that's reason number one why the keto diet seems to work is that people just drop massive amounts of water weight in the beginning. Reason number two why the keto diet seems to work, let's look at the keto diet and what it can and cannot entail. Well, if we look at the keto food pyramid, we see that it doesn't allow for things like cakes, candy and sugar. When people go on a diet and they start to pay attention to the things that they can and cannot eat, they tend to stop eating a lot of unhealthy things that they were eating before and they'll misattribute their success to the diet and what they were eating as opposed to what they were not eating. So when people go on the, the keto diet and they start to lose weight, it's not because they were eating the bacon and the eggs and the high fat foods, it's because they were not eating the cakes and the candy and the processed foods that they were before. Reason number three why the keto diet works is because the keto diet is a starvation diet. When I was doing some research about brain fog, which is one of the symptoms of the keto diet, which we'll talk about later, um, I learned a bit about the brain running off of ketones. And the brain running off of ketones is one of the things that marks the ketosis diet, the keto diet. But what I found was that the brain is only gonna run off of ketones when the body is starving. So this means that the whole foundation of keto and one of the things that makes keto keto only happens when the body is starving, which leads us to believe that ketosis is based on the fact that our bodies do have to be starving. It's a starvation diet in order for ketosis to occur. So for us to say that 
the keto diet itself is what is causing people to lose weight is not a sound thing to say because what's really going on here is that people are eating a lot less calories than they were. They've cleaned up their diet and they're not eating all the crapola that they were before and they're dropping massive amounts of water weight. But it is a starvation diet. So you're eating a lot less calories than you were before. Less calories being eaten than calories are being burned. Weight loss. In fact, one of the most cited sources on the keto diet, one of the most cited studies, which I've linked below, I'll link all the studies below in the down bar, by the way, in case you're curious, but one of the most cited studies on keto actually admits that the people that were on the keto diet were in a caloric deficit of 450 calories. So they, in, they, they starved the people in the study, and if you're eating less calories than you're burning, you're gonna lose weight, so those people lost weight, and they said, hey, it's the keto diet that's making these people lose weight when really it was just the fact that they were eating less calories. The great news is that you can actually be on a high carb diet and not have to worry about counting calories and lose weight like crazy. Like the people on my program, we don't count calories, we don't restrict portions, and these people are losing weight like crazy with no caloric restriction, eating in abundance, and turning their body into fat burning machines. But hey, let's talk a little bit more about the dangers of keto. So let's look into the keto food pyramid and what it does entail. If we look down at the bottom, we see that meat, eggs, and dairy is a big part of the keto diet. Study after study after study shows us that a diet high in animal products leads directly to all-cause mortality. So by eating this diet, we are increasing our chances of dying of things like heart disease and cancer and stroke. Animal products are deadly. They're deadly. And if you don't believe me, I mean the World Health Organization has classified processed meats as a group 1A carcinogen, which is right up there with cigarettes and arsenic. So we may as well just throw cigarettes and arsenic down into the food pyramid right next to the bacon and the pork that's in there too. These foods are carcinogens. They cause cancer, they cause premature death, and they should not be the majority of our diet. These foods, these animal products, they're also high in saturated fat, which clogs our arteries and raises our bad cholesterol. They're high in sodium, which increases our blood pressure. They lack any fiber, which contributes to constipation and gastrointestinal issues. This is not a safe diet. Glucose is the body's preferred source of fuel, carbohydrates. And these foods are devoid of that. They're so high in fat and protein. You know, just a couple of bananas will put you over your limit for the keto diet as far as carbs go. And that's like putting gas in your car but only putting in a teaspoon. It's just not gonna work in the long term. There are so many more dangers of the keto diet and we know this because the diet has been studied for hundreds of years and that's because it was originally used as a form of, of treatment for children with epilepsy. So we have a lot of studies about the keto diet and sadly they do show that there are a lot of harsh side effects. Um, one of the first ones is gastrointestinal issues and the reason for this is that Animal products are, are not meant to be consumed by humans. They, they have no fiber in them, so we're not gonna be moving it through our system. And humans are not designed to be eating such large portions of meat. We are not built like carnivores are. Our intestines are a lot longer, and they're about, our intestines are about nine times the length of our body. Carnivores have an intestine about one and a half to three times the length of their body. And the reason for that is that when you're eating these meat products, you really wanna get them in and out of your system. But with humans, we eat these meat products and our intestines are so long, our colons are so much longer than that of carnivores. What happens is that that meat ends up sitting and rotting in our intestines, which it's not meant to do. It's not healthy. Another thing is that we don't have the strong stomach acid to break down this meat. and carnivores do. We have very weak stomach acid, but carnivores have very strong stomach acid to help them break down meat. We are not designed to be eating such large portions of meat. Um, we can handle a little bit of it. I eat a completely vegan diet. I don't eat any meat at all, but we can ha handle a little bit of it, but not huge, massive quantities like being eaten on the keto diet, which is why people are experiencing such terrible issues like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, because these are not the foods that we are designed to eat. Our stomach, our intestines, our colon can't handle it. Another 
another symptom of the keto diet is brain fog. And the reason for this is that the brain uses about 120 grams of glucose per day. When we're not eating carbohydrates, we are not getting the levels of glucose that we need. And our brain is not getting the glucose that it needs to run. And people on the keto diet will say that our brain can run off of fatty acids instead, but this is actually not true. Fat does not cross the brain barrier. Our brain does not run off of fat. Our brain runs off of glucose. And there is a scenario in which our brain can run off of ketones in the process of ketosis. But what I said earlier is that this only occurs when our body is in starvation mode. So our brain is going to run off of ketones, but only when we're starving. Why would we want to do that? Instead, we want to fuel up on carbohydrates so that our brain and our body can run. Because as I said earlier, fatty acids, fats do not cross the brain barrier. And that is a belief that, that people hold. And they'll say fats are brain food. You need fats for your brain food, but your brain runs off of glucose. So if you want to have clarity, eat carbohydrates. Another harsh side effect of the keto diet is a slowed metabolism. So studies prove, and I've linked these studies below, that there are no metabolic advantages of being on a keto diet. And in fact, it's shown that it has adverse effects in the metabolism to be on a ketogenic diet. And just the opposite is that a whole foods plant-based diet actually increases our metabolism. And studies prove that as well. After eating a meal of whole foods, your metabolism is faster than those that ate a meal that was not based off of whole plant foods. And I'll link that in the description bar as well so you can look into that. But a whole foods plant-based diet revs up your metabolism, whereas a ketogenic diet has adverse effects on metabolism. Another side effect is kidney stones. Children were seen having kidney stones while on the ketogenic diet. Another effect was hair loss. And the reason for this is that the ketogenic diet doesn't allow for an abundance of fruits and vegetables. And an abundance of fruits and vegetables and carbohydrates have all the vitamins and minerals that we need. So being on the ketogenic diet, you are robbing yourself of so many essential vitamins and minerals that can lead to hair loss. Sadly, it was also shown that there was poor growth in children who were on a keto diet and osteoporosis and bone fractures were also prevalent. And, and the reason for this is that when we eat animal protein, it's so acidic that our bones have to release something alkaline to balance the pH of our blood. So when we eat lots and lots of animal protein, our bones have to release something and guess what they choose to release? Calcium. So it weakens our bones to have such an influx of animal protein in our blood. And that's why eating a keto diet that's so high in animal products cause these issues with, with bones. So what is the most optimal diet to be on? I don't recommend a keto diet, but what I do recommend is a whole foods plant-based diet. This diet has been shown to prevent and even help reverse 14 out of the 15 leading causes of death. The only one that it could not help is car accidents. The plant-based diet is the most optimal diet for humans. And if you want to lose weight, make this the diet that you go on. Like I said, my clients do not count calories. They do not restrict their portions. They eat in abundance and they lose weight like crazy, feeling incredible, having energy, not restricting themselves. The whole foods plant-based diet is the best diet to lose weight. It's also the best diet for longevity in the long term because as Dr. McDougall always points out, all populations of lean, trim, and healthy individuals, all of them through all of verifiable human history, just as Dr. McDougall says, thrived on a diet of starch. If we look at the Asian populations, they thrived on a diet of rice and the Okinawans, which are part of the blue zones, living to be 100, thrived on a diet of sweet potatoes. The Middle Easterns and Egyptians on wheat, the Aztecs on corn. This is the diet for longevity and health, a diet based on starch and on whole plants. A diet based on animal products results in cancer, heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, all cause mortality, really. And if we want to fuel ourselves and love ourselves in the long term, we have to nourish ourselves on a whole foods plant-based diet, not on a keto diet. All right, honeys, I hope that this cleared this up for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or send me a DM. Um, as I said before, this video is not to attack anybody. You do you, honey. You know, I'm eating my potatoes happy as a clam. You do you. I'm just here to deliver the information because it was asked. So I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Yeah. Woo!